grace and peace, the beloved St. Luke community. Early on Sunday mornings, when I preach and lead worship in our beautiful sanctuary at St. Luke, I'm aware of the care and love and work that goes into providing a beautiful and memorable worship experience for our members. The changing of the seasons are always accompanied by the church environment, the different colors as they change, and the other pieces of beauty that that enhance our church, like the flames of fire on and the many banners on Pentecost uh, Sunday. I'm aware that people have been at work before we arrived, I'm making the bulletin, preparing the altar, going through the readings for Sunday, um, uh, my own work, thinking about the texts all week as we prepare the sermon, the work of our Bible study as it helps me think and orient the passages for the Sunday with what's going on in our lives, the lives of our people, our country, our, our church. So I'm always grateful when I arrive on a Sunday morning, very well aware of all the preparation that has happened. Um, this past Sunday, four baptisms, the Sunday before a confirmation and a a uh, procession out of our church and into the courtyard, decorating our fence with beautiful red ribbons for the flames of fire of Pentecost. I'm reminded of uh, a beautiful passage from the uh, book Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. She writes through the voice of Reverend Ames, a Calvinist pastor, as he thinks about a Sunday morning. And this, this thought is a lot like what I have on Sunday mornings at St. Luke. Marilyn writes, Sometimes I loved the peacefulness of an ordinary Sunday morning. It is like standing in a newly planted garden after a warm rain. You can feel the silent and invisible life. All it needs for you, from you, is to take care not to trample on it. That idea of something being born, of nascent life standing in a planted garden after a warm rain. And I want you to think about how this warm life connects beyond the walls of our building. Our, this past Friday, our closing worship service was a beautiful expression of faith. In this warm garden, children's faith every Wednesday in chapel have been nurtured and watered. And now at our closing service this past Friday, the children played the bells, the handbells that uh, they have learned. They accompanied Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Many families and parents and also St. Luke members were there. This was a wonderful expression of the life of our church. The children read the lessons and they were excellent. And then we went to the awards ceremony and so many folks have talked to us about what it means school families for them to be connected to St. Luke as an ally in sharing the faith with their children and their families. That warm rain of a planted garden burgeoning with beautiful flowers. It's that way in our virtual community as well. So many people talk about how much it means to them to be at our altar at St. Luke from their own home or hospital bed or wherever they happen to be. That this life, this warm garden radiates. And I've had 
this thought. Where would we be without our faith? Where would we be without a family of believers who share with us a kind of love which bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things? I think of that every time one of you assures me of, of, of your prayers for me or my family. And now as Janet is in a rehabilitation center at Northwestern. Where would we be without this? And I truly believe that this was the point of our listening season three years ago in our strategic planning process. Why wouldn't we want this strength and resilience of the gospel for others? And so our plan was not driven by budgets or members in the pew or more offerings in the plate. Our hopes for mission are driven by an unvarnished love for God and love of neighbor and a deep wish to share the blessings of a life of faith among one another, but also in Lakeview and through our parish and our other congregations and then around the world. The Eucharist always continues the planted garden reaching out beyond ourselves. And so this past Sunday, I took some bread and wine from the altar at St. Luke's and Park Ridge where I was serving, which I've often done from the altar at St. Luke in Lakeview to share with Home Communion Hospital. But this Sunday, the Eucharist of the Church continued at the Ryan Rehabilitation Center as I placed a napkin on a table next to Janet's chair, placed bread and wine from the altar on it, and shared in the family meal of the church. And you and your prayers were with us. Our virtual congregation was with us. All of us held in the Holy Spirit's tether with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven in every time and every place. Our strategic plan calls for us to share the love of Christ that changes lives among ourselves, in our community, in Lakeview, and around the world. I experienced that this past Sunday even when I wasn't with you. I was at the font in my heart and in my prayers with those four who were baptized. And you are all with me wherever I am when the bread and cup are lifted up. God bless you all.